Hey guys, how's it going? Delrith here, bringing you another rapid fire style review, this time for the game Immortal Unchained. Immortal is a third person combat action RPG developed and designed by Toadman Interactive. Immortal's story is pretty simple to follow. You're a prisoner that has been confined to a citadel like fortress for a vast amount of time, released when the galaxy is dealing with a massive threat and all other options have been exhausted. You, the prisoner, are tasked with restoring balance and power to the universe by activating a bunch of magical space orbs and powering up the deity of the prime race, avoiding any spoilers, generally achieved by stomping around and beating up bosses. I really don't want to say this as I'm fully aware of the meme, but the direct comparison in this game is far too obvious to not say it, and I said it multiple times while streaming it, this game is almost a, a carbon copy of Dark Souls, but it has guns. Almost every single facet of this game is a direct copy or directly influenced by Dark Souls. You have bonfires called obelisks, souls called bits, almost identical weapon upgrading, a stat system with weapon scaling stats, and of course a complete lack of a map. Again, I'm not just referencing a meme, this game feels to me like they took the technical concept of Dark Souls, gave it a different and darker skin, and then failed to innovate it in any major way whatsoever. Design-wise and visually, Immortal Unchained is a completely dark and grim mess with very little I would consider visually stunning or impressive in its own right. The game doesn't look awful, but half the time you're hard-pressed to see if it looks good with it seeming like the brightness bar has been dragged completely down to zero. Enemy designs in this game, visually, are almost remarkably identical to each other in almost every sense. All enemies generally follow the same concept of being robotic abominations of flesh and steel, with a couple of glowy bits thrown in here and there. Sizes on these enemies are different, of course, but there are almost no deviations from the beginning enemies you fight to the in-game ones, causing a distinct lack of variety between locals. Almost every enemy in the game features the exact same visual weak point as well, a glowy bit located on their back, with it seeming like there was little to no effort put into that. Of course, I'll give them credit and say that the weak spot has a different shape every so often, but the concept is a copy-pasted thing throughout the entire game on all of the mobs. The guns, too, are incredibly visually underwhelming. They had the chance with this dark sci-fi Norse god-like universe to go and make some truly incredible and unique weapon designs, but instead opted to take real-world weapons and simply tack some glowy bits onto them. I'm not joking, they literally took things like the Chris Vector and added glowing circles on it and declared that it was a space gun. In fact, 99% of the weapons I found in the game were all direct real-world ports of guns with a few obvious slight edits. There was, from what I could tell, no attempt at designing unique weaponry specific to the universe. It was incredibly disappointing. World design is also incredibly uninspired. Most locations are entirely dark, with the exception of one planet area, and don't feature anything visually impressive or memorable that I can recall. If I hadn't actually been using a teleporter to move between locations, or at this point I could say bonfire, I'd feel like I was on the same planet from start to finish. These worlds felt like complete mazes with little to no direction, something which was far overdone and becomes an immense point of frustration throughout your play. And oh yeah, if, if you want to get loot from the crates tossed around all throughout the levels, you're going to have to backtrack a ton, as you will not have the keys to open them all until much later in the game. And you also don't get fast travel until about 4 or 5 hours into the game, so be prepared to deal with that. Boss design? Immortal boasts a good number of bosses. However, more than half of them are not even unique and are simply upscaled versions of the same enemies you've been fighting the entire game. The weak points are the same, the visuals are the same, their movements are the same. They're carbon copy clones upscaled to look boss size. There are a few unique ones, sure, and some are okay, but the majority were disappointing to fight and look at and they honestly got old real quick. Believe it or not, everyone, the sound design in the game is incredibly disappointing and a letdown as well. First thing that comes to mind is how every weapon of the same type in Immortal sounds exactly the same. You pick up an M4 laser assault rifle, sounds the exact same as this weird AK laser thing you have. Pick up a laser Uzi, sounds the exact same as your Chris Vector. If you're lucky and pick up a unique looking sniper rifle, well, it's gonna sound the same as your laser Dragonov. You get the point. They seem to have just picked one generic sound for each class of weapon and used it throughout the entire playthrough, once again failing to innovate. This sort of laziness applies to nearly every other audio aspect of Immortal as well. It also felt like the same song played 24-7 in the game on a loop in the background. 
Always a depressing tune that, even if it did change, was almost identical across every planet and location. However, the uh, game's biggest problems are not with the visuals or the audio or the sound at all. It's in the actual technical aspects of the gameplay itself. First off, the enemy AI is absolutely awful. Every enemy seems to show almost no signs of intelligence and will quite literally just stand there while you shoot them in the face. At times, most enemies will not be able to shoot or do anything if you simply corner peek and it results in a lot of fights being a complete joke. This AI problem more than extends to bosses as well since multiple bosses, like I said, are reused as standard enemies and suffer from the same stupidity. There were times where I literally just stood outside of their weapon range and shot them in the head, or times where the boss just forgot I existed and let me stand there shooting his weak point, resulting in them dying in mere moments. There were times where I watched enemy AI faceplant against a wall and walk into it, try to commit suicide via ledges, and constantly shoot one another. They don't even seem to react when they're shot by their friends, simply getting up again to walk slowly in my general direction. You can easily summarize most enemies in the game down to four types. Enemies that walk slowly at you and try to melee you and die. Enemies that stand in place and fire slowly at you before dying. Enemies that stand at long range and fire at you before dying. And the most annoying bullshit ones, the teleporters. The teleporting enemies in this game are without a doubt the worst thing to ever exist in a Souls game ever. They're, to put it simply, enemies that teleport around or near you and then shoot you almost instantaneously without any time for you to react. This will result in dozens of cheap and frustrating deaths, with the difficulty being more in RNG than actual skill. If you do end up playing this, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about when you run into the telesnipers. Combat in this game is the most average iteration of the third person RPG style I have ever encountered. Melee is incredibly useless from what I found, only having you spam one button to do the same combo over and over again, and the guns themselves give no positive feedback and feel janky throughout the game. If you're using a controller, you'll notice more than a few issues with the smoothness of aiming, resulting in you simply using the combat lock throughout your entire play. Weapons are also seemingly bound to the same range of effectiveness, resulting in sniper rifles having relatively the same range as something like a pistol, further removing any individuality that the weapons could have had. I'm not sure why they made the design decision to further remove any unique feel from the guns, but that's what they did and it's not good. Magic isn't a thing in this game. You've got a mana bar, but it's only ever used to activate the special abilities on weapons, which for the most part are a detriment to use or entirely lackluster. These include things like burst fire or precision shot, and none of the weapons particularly have anything spectacular or impressive, even the legendary ones. Since ammo is such an issue for the vast majority of your playthrough, the last thing you're going to want to do is empty your entire magazine on a special ability, making most of them worthless. As far as one positive I'll give the game though, it's nice to see that there's sort of a localized damage system in the game. Shooting enemies in certain spots will result in staggers or limbs being blown off, and I can appreciate that. But most of the time you're just going to aim for the headshot to kill them instantly or get tons of critical damage. This was the one small bit of innovation and difference in the mechanics from the other Souls games I've played and they didn't elaborate on it nearly enough. So with all of these problems yet to ask, was the game technically sound at least? No! No it was not. No it was not. Throughout my playthrough I ran into a myriad of bugs and glitches that caused me a lot of frustration. Enemies would constantly teleport into walls and shoot me through them. I got stuck on more objects than I could possibly try to count and had to teleport home. I had multiple audio glitches, I had multiple texture glitches, I had multiple full screen issues, and I fell through the world no less than three times. This was not a technically sound title by any definition of the word. Everything that it does is either incredibly average or below average, and the only thing I could possibly say it did better was frustrate me beyond words. Due to this, Immortal Unchained is getting a final score of 4 out of 10. It was a below average and buggy game. I cannot suggest you buy it at full retail price, maybe when it's down below $20, but not until that point. There were so many chances for them to do something incredible or amazing with the core concept they were going with, but at the end of the day, the entire iteration simply felt mediocre. I honestly would suggest, and I can't believe I'm saying this, The Surge or Lords of the Fallen over this game any day if you're looking for a Souls-like fix. Anyway guys, that's going to be it for me. I hope you enjoyed this rapid fire style review, and if you did, please do me a solid and hit that subscribe button, or hit that bell if you're already subbed. Until the next review, I'll be seeing ya.